Hello and welcome to Switched On, my name is Paul and I thought with the crazy situation we find ourselves in right now and a lot of people looking for ideas to pass the time during lockdown it may be a good time to update my top board games on the Nintendo Switch. My last list was a top 5 a year or so ago and in that time the Switch board game library has grown steadily and there are some excellent digital conversions available on the system which makes this list very hard to rank. Also, stick around for my games to watch out for in the coming months, which all being well, would definitely have made this list. But without further ado, here are my top 11 board games available on the Nintendo Switch. First up is a fairly obscure little solitaire card game which originated in Japan, and that is Sheffy. In Sheffy, you play as a shepherd with the goal of having a sheep card worth 1,000 sheep by the time you've turned over the deck of event cards three times. You start with a single sheep and each event card you turn has various effects on such as doubling the value of a sheep card or having a wolf eat your cards. It's quick to play with a really quirky art style and is a relaxing way to spend 15 minutes but the bare bones presentation may put some off. For the price it's definitely worthy of a place in your collection though. Number 10 is Carcassonne. One of the most beloved board games around this tile laying game as you're rebuilding the Carcassonne region in France by placing different tiles on the table and then placing one of your coloured meeples on it to give you points at the end of the game. It's a shame this particular version on the Switch isn't one of the best digital conversions around, suffering from a clunky UI and a lack of online play. If you only have a Switch then it's a nice enough way to play Carcassonne, but if you can play it elsewhere then that would be my advice. At number 9 we have Monopoly, the classic family board game that's probably been the cause of more arguments over the Christmas day table than who has to sit next to Nana and her Brussels sprout farts. The game that's loved and loathed by millions and this Switch port is as likely to divide fans with some nice presentation with plenty of 3D graphics to add character and online player plus but some performance issues and frustrating elements like slow unskippable animations just making the already tedious experience even longer. Definitely one for fans only. Chess is a classic isn't it? Easy to learn and a lifetime to master. Thankfully number 8's entry Chess Ultra from Ripstone is almost as good as sitting across from a grandmaster. Featuring some stunning 3D graphics, a choice of graphical styles, a synchronous online play allowing for multiple concurrent games to be running and the familiar ELO rating system, it really is a lovely package and a must for any chess fan. It has to be said there are quite a few other chess games out on the Switch right now from straight up standard chess to various puzzle games based on the classic gameplay but I still feel Chess Ultra is THE chess game to get. At number 7 is Lord of the Rings The Adventure Game. Now I was pretty close to leaving this off the list as it isn't a straight digital conversion from the actual card game, but it's very much in the spirit for that highly ranked LCG and just close enough to include I felt. And what a game it is, incredibly polished presentation with voice acting and enough nice animations without being too distracting and a really interesting adventure to play through using your custom built decks of cards to overcome events and monsters. There's even the option to play online co-op with a friend. Sadly, whilst I was given a code to review this one, I never got the chance to get round to it, but I would absolutely recommend this to any card game fans. A different sort of card game now, as it's the altogether more family friendly Uno at number six. This classic race to get rid of all of your cards by matching the last card's value or color laid on the top of the deck is always a joy to play with people of all ages. Although not a patch on the original Xbox 360 version which really helped usher in Xbox Live Chat and the more dubious video chat functionality, it's still a very fun game to relax with. We're lucky enough to have free switches in our house and often join up and invite an online player to fill the fourth spot which works pretty flawlessly. Can highly recommend this one for some chilled out card action. Time to get serious now with this list with the top 5 which to be fair could be placed in any order as they really are the cream of the digital ball game conversions on Switch. In at number 5 is Direwolf Digital's excellent port of Raiders of the North Sea. This is the most recent game on the list in terms of its cardboard release and holds a respectable 83rd on Board Game Geek. It's a unique worker placement game with an excellent twist where you put one of your workers down on a space to take an action and then take a different worker off the board to take a second action. 
I really enjoy this puzzle aspect on top of the usual worker placement system. The Switch version is beautifully presented with its Viking theme really coming through and a nice mission system and also this one has asynchronous online play. Highly recommended. A more topical game there could not be now as the fourth spot goes to Pandemic, a game about saving the world from a spreading virus. This is a cooperative game where you can play as up to four of seven selectable unique characters alone or with buddies using your character's unique abilities to help slow the spread and eventually cure four viruses that are infecting the world. Whilst games can be quite random due to each turn relying on the turn of a card, good use of your actions and abilities will definitely be needed to win the game. Whilst the digital version's presentation is nicely done with dramatic music and nice animations, the game stays very true to its origins, though it is a real bare bones offering and its budget feel does hamper the Switch version a little, although it shouldn't take away from a great game. Istanbul from Akram Digital takes third spot, and like Raiders of the North Sea, this is a fairly modern offering in the board game world and also offers a nice wrinkle to the worker placement mechanic where you have to move your merchant to a spot on the board to take an action but can only carry out the task if you leave one of your four helper tokens behind. If you run out of tokens you will need to regroup them which leads to nice strategic planning. The switch port is superbly handled from the great visuals and sound effects to asynchronous online play, random setups and even achievements to obtain in this one. This is really the standard that all digital board games should be aiming to achieve. Whilst not as stinky or as polished presentation wise as something like an Istanbul, Talisman takes the second spot due to the overwhelming amount of game included. Even in just the base game there's a generosity of content that will provide hours and hours of gameplay, plus there's a wealth of downloadable paid content available for those wanting to add to their Talisman experience. The Switch version is handled pretty well with online play, a decent looking board and no performance issues that I came across. You can even set a number of house rules if you want to tweak the experience. If you want an epic fantasy adventure, then dice rolling, loot collecting gameplay of Talisman will certainly fit the bill. Now before I get to the number one board game on Switch, here are some upcoming releases to get excited for. Now Wingspan is proof that you can make a board game around any obscure theme as this one sees you collecting birds in your own private sanctuary. Now whilst the theme does sound a little bit awful, the game is actually a joy to play, not least because of the beautiful production from fantastic artwork on the cards, lovely looking little eggs to collect and a quite bonkers dice tower shaped like a birdhouse to build in the box, but the actual gameplay is really fun too. The app version from what has been shown so far in this trailer looks stunning and I can't wait to get onto it when it releases on the Switch sometime this summer. Charter Stone like Wingspan is another beautiful game from board game publisher Stonemaier Games and comes with similarly stunning production values. This is a legacy style game which for those that don't understand that term means that it's a board game that changes as you play it with new components being revealed from blind boxes and stickers that you stick onto the board to change how it plays over a series of 12 playthroughs. The digital version has been out a little while now on Steam and iOS and it's just an incredibly well thought out digital conversion that really captures the aesthetic of the original perfectly. I've loved playing this on my iPad and I'll be down for the Switch version as soon as it releases. Finally, one of the best bits of news in this absolutely rubbish year so far was the reveal of Clubhouse Games coming to the Switch. This was one of my favourite 3DS games and whilst not strictly all board games, it will contain a number of classic games from chess to drafts and backgammon to Othello plus card games like Texas Hold'em and Solitaire. I'm eagerly awaiting the June 5th release for this one. Okay, let's get to the number one entry of board games on the Nintendo Switch. Now when I settled down to compile this list, I actually did not expect to have Catan ranked at number one. Considered a gateway game, something which is easy to explain and play with non-gamers, but also one that has just about enough depth to make strategic decisions important with resource trading and development cards to collect. It can be notoriously frustrating if the dice are against you and you're really waiting for that one resource that nobody will trade with you, but games play out quick enough that any luck will eventually even out over a run of games. The Switch port is really nicely polished with standard games available to play 
an online mode, various AI characters, and even a story type mode where you play through a number of rounds with different targets to achieve. This serves as a really nice way to learn the game. But yeah, if anyone disagrees with this number one choice, I'm honestly as surprised as you are, but here we are. It's a great game. Don't let anything that you've heard about Catan put you off it. Definitely worth the money. So there you go, it's my top 11 board games that you can get on the Switch right now. If you're bored during lockdown and fancy something different to play, then have a look at those. If you've got any other choices that you think deserve a place on the list, then please leave them in the comments below. Or if you disagree with my order, then uh, please let me know. I'm sure you won't be slow to do that. Uh, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe if you're new. And I uh, really hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.